Increased ICP is a must-know topic for the NCLEX and nursing exams, since it's very deadly and it relates to so many highly tested topics. So be sure to pay attention and write all the key points down in this video. So first off, let's break down the word. Let the name help you here. Increased intracranial pressure, just think high pressure inside the cranium, the head, which puts loads of pressure on the brain eventually squashing the brainstem, which controls breathing and heart rate. And this eventually kills the patient. Now, as far as the causes, just think of anything that can increase pressure inside the head. From increased bleeding in the head from an aneurysm stroke, we get a bursted blood vessel that now fills up the brain, causing increased pressure. Or increased swelling and inflammation from a head trauma or even meningitis. So, more inflammation means more pressure or even increased brain tissue like from a tumor. Now, as far as the pathophysiology, again, just think this increased pressure compresses the brain. So initially, it compresses blood vessels that carry oxygen to the brain. So less blood means less oxygen, resulting in a change of level of consciousness from cerebral hypoxia, that low oxygen to the brain. So the key term here is reduced level of consciousness, or decreased mental status. Write that down. This is the earliest sign of increased ICP, and even Hesse says that the earliest sign of increased ICP, the answer was altered level of consciousness. Again, just think low oxygen means low consciousness, or mental status change, also known as altered level of consciousness. You like that, did you? Well, click here and get access to over a thousand fun visual videos, 300 study guide cheat sheets, and a massive quiz bank loaded with detailed rationales to test your knowledge. Neatly organized in our new app. Click here to get started for free. Now for the signs and symptoms to write down. So the earliest signs are typically the most tested on the NCLEX. So key terms again, altered level of consciousness, but they also call it irritability and restlessness as well as decreased mental status. Then we can see sleepiness, as well as a flat affect and drowsiness. Now again, the NCLEX and exit exams love to focus on this, since early detection saves lives. Now for moderate signs, we see a headache that's constant, and then another key term, sudden vomiting, that emesis, without nausea. We must report this to the HCP, or the provider. Now, the big key term here is vomiting without nausea. This was mentioned a few times by various exams and NCLEX question banks. So a common NCLEX question asks which client is priority? And it's typically the one with a closed head injury waiting for brain imaging who reports key terms here, headache and emesis of 200 mLs without nausea. So again, write down those big key terms again, the NCLEX loves to ask about priority clients. So, emesis without nausea is typically a priority finding. Now for the late deadly signs here. As ICP builds, it puts a lot of pressure on the brainstem at the base of the brain, which controls the heart rate and breathing. So, this eventually leads to irregular breathing and other vitals. So, in the lungs, we'll see irregular respirations known as Cheney-Stoke respirations. This is basically fast and slow breathing. In the neck, we see nuchal rigidity, that stiff neck. Patients complain of they cannot flex the chin toward the chest. Write that down, it's a big key word. So just think all this pressure inside the brain is pushing down on that brainstem, causing herniation. Now the key signs that the brainstem is affected is, write this down, the pupils will be fixed and dilated and sometimes unequal. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. Alright guys, see you next time.